going to start with two products in the glaucoma market. And uh, both these products are once a day eye drops for the treatment of glaucoma. And if and when they're approved, they'll bring the first new MOAs into the glaucoma market in 20 years. So that's quite a, quite a time. Repressa is our single agent product that we believe lowers IOP through three different MOAs. First, it's a ROC or ROC kinase inhibitor, so it increases outflow through the trabecular meshwork. Secondly, it's a norepinephrine transporter inhibitor or net inhibitor, so it reduces the production of aqueous humor, and it also lowers episcleral venous pressure. We were able to refile our NDA the same day that our contract manufacturer told us we were ready for FDA inspection, and we're busy building our commercial team. Now, Rocklatan is a combination product that combines Ropressa and those three MOAs I mentioned with the world's top selling glaucoma product, Latanoprost. And we have two ongoing phase three trials right now and a couple slides I'll share with you the, the top line results of Mercury 1. And then this quarter we'll announce our Mercury 2 results. I'm not gonna have time to go into our preclinical program, but you're certainly able to go in and uh, look at it on our website. Just as a summary from a Repressa, we've studied Repressa in four different phase three trials and three of those trials Rocket 1, 2, and 4, Ropressa was found to be non-inferior to Timolo in patients with baseline IOPs below 25. In the fourth trial, Ropressa was found to be non-inferior to Latanoprost, again, in patients with IOP below 25. Now, this shows you the results of our most recent phase 3 trial, which we call Rocket 4, comparing Ropressa to Timolo, again, in patients with baseline IOPs below 25, from week two through month six. And as you can see, throughout the entirety of the trial, the performance of Repressa remained within the non-inferiority range. Now these two charts highlight Repressa's ability to consistently lower IOP. So this shows patients IOP at 8 a.m. through each study visit, both in patients with IOPs below 25 and below 27. So you can see there's no loss of efficacy, no tachyphylaxis that sets in this trial, just good consistent IOP lowering. I'll end the discussion on Repressa efficacy with some new data we have from a pilot study that, that evaluated Repressa's ability to lower pressure over a 24-hour period of time. So the chart in the middle of the slide shows you that Repressa lowered IOP at night just as well as it did during the day compared to baseline. And those of you that either know the market or read the bottom of the slide know, today's currently marketed glaucoma products do not work as well at night as they do during the day. So if we can replicate this in a larger trial, we may have another significant advantage for Repressa. Briefly, from a safety standpoint, there were no drug-related systemic AEs or serious AEs. <clears throat> the number one AE was um, ocular hyperemia, or red eye, um, and it was found at an incident rate of about 48%. Interesting, only 10% of the patients had hyperemia at each study visit. The rest of the people had hyperemia as a sporadic event. Regardless, 75% of the time, the hyperemia is rated as mild, and to put it in perspective, only 4% of the people discontinued because of hyperemia. Now, I'll go on to Roclitan. So this is results from our Mercury 1 trial, which compared Roclitan, which is the blue lines on the bottom of the chart, to the two individual components, again, Latanoprost and Repressa. And as you can see, the performance of Roclitan bettered that of the individual components by one to three millimeters of mercury at each of the nine time points through the three months of the trial. So very good results. And you can see <clears throat> the results were highly robust. The p-value was less than 0.0001. So very good. This shows the responder analysis that we were able to get from um, this study as well. So this shows the proportion of patients in each arm that attained certain levels of IOP lowering. So as an example, Roclitan uh, got 61% of the patients in its arm to 60 millimeters of mercury or less. And you can see how that compared to the other two components. If you go down, 45% of the people in the Roclitan arm got to 15 millimeters of mercury. And frankly, 33% or a third of them got to 14 millimeters of mercury with one drop a day. And you can see it's far better than what was found in the individual components. And you can see the p-value on the chart as well. Briefly, from a summary standpoint, very consistent with what we saw in Repressa. Again, there was no serious nor systemic AEs, which is a big worry off the ophthalmologist's mind. The number one AE was, again, ocular hyperemia to a rate of about 50%. But just as we saw before, it's highly sporadic, mild in about 80% of the cases. And the other thing we saw, as we did with our other trials as well, that about 20% of the patients actually had hyperemia at baseline, which means after washout and before initiating the study treatment. So it's a very common event. The other AEs were what you would have expected from what we saw in Repressa as well as the Latanoprost arms. I'll just end with this uh, last picture to show you because you can see that we're starting our corporate ads now to build more and more awareness around um, ARI. 
we're really highlighting three things in these ads. The first is certainly our products. The second is our science. But of course, the third and probably the most important is our beloved founder, who many of you in this room know and many ophthalmologists know, Dr. David Epstein, our great leader. So thank you very much for your attention, and I'll turn the mic back over. Thanks.